How's it going guys, Vincent here, and in this video I'm going to be talking about how I recommend reading through very dense scientific literature or papers and how to read this information more quickly as well as retain more of the information that you just read in digital formats. And for me this is something that's been very challenging because I'm someone who's very note takey I like taking notes, I like having a pen and paper with me and a highlighter. And so switching to these digital formats where most of what I read for work or school is on a computer screen has been pretty challenging because especially when you're on a computer, I feel like it's very easy to get distracted on Netflix or YouTube or Facebook or whatever. And so staying focused and on point with what you need to do is something that for me it has been challenging. And so in this video, I'm hoping to share what I've used that is helping me and things that I wish I knew sooner so that hopefully I can help more people um, with their projects or work. So, um, you know, I think a very important distinction to make up front is that there is a big difference between active reading as well as passive reading. Active reading is where we're reading this article, take this one for instance, because we need to learn information, we need to figure out how to solve some kind of problem or prepare for a meeting or a video or whatever. And so, you know, our goal here is to not just sit here and peruse this information. Our goal is to get information out of this. So it's a very active process and you should be very engaged and focused. And so like doing this on a computer can be challenging. And so what I do is I love using Microsoft Word um, and I'll show you guys how I've set up my Microsoft Word to actually help me with this process. You might be able to do the same thing with Open Office if you don't want to pay for it or Google Drive. Um, but one of the reasons why I like Microsoft Word is that it is <laughs> boring. Um, so, you know, when you're not on the internet, you're not as tempted to just open up a new tab and go somewhere else. You have to be focused. So like when you copy paste this article into a Microsoft Word document and you close your web browser, literally the only thing you can focus on right now is this document. And so what I do is, you know, I'll put the URL here in case I want to go back to the article, but like, I'll just close everything else on the computer and just have this Word document in front of me. And then the next thing that I'll do is, and this is something you only have to do one time, but it really helps me out a lot, which is enabling a keyboard shortcut for the highlighter. So if you go to file and then you go to options, and then we go to customize ribbon, and then we go to keyboard shortcuts and click customize. Under categories, we can go to all commands, and then there's a command in here called highlight. And if you just type in HIG on the keyboard, it'll pull up highlight, and you can type in ALL, and it'll pull up there too, so you don't have to scroll through it. But what you'll do is you'll click in this new shortcut key area, you'll click or hit on your keyboard Alt plus H, and then you'll click assign. And this will make highlighting very easy to do in Microsoft Word. So you can just close this out, click OK. And now if we wanted to highlight a new word, we would just highlight it like this and then press Alt-H on the keyboard. And I use my pinky and my index finger. Uh, and now we've highlighted this word. And for me, it really helps out a lot with basically taking these very dense articles where you've got a ton of nouns, a ton of verbs, and a lot of points being made and be able to like kind of boil it down to like what are the main points behind each paragraph because as you can see like this stuff gets super dense and like VEGF and you know you have no idea what this is and you know it's very easy to get lost so like the way I read through these articles is you know dates nouns first instances of these abbreviations are especially in well-written journals like science mag has a lot of them um, they will do a great job of kind of in that first paragraph, you're going to get all these main abbreviations that are important as well as kind of an abstract into the actual article. So understanding that first paragraph for a lot of this content is super important. Um, and then like pivot words, like although, but yet, even though, like things like that, uh, usually signal that the author is about to say something very important. So this is something that, you know, when you see these basically like keywords you want to focus in on like okay what did the author just say here because they're trying to make a point um, and it really helps me with being able to retain more information um, so like yeah December 19 uh, it's basically a date I'm seeing a new virus and you know the first time that they declare SARS-CoV-2 this abbreviation they defined what the full noun is right here so like that's why I highlighted it Wuhan China that's an important location so like even without reading all the words in this sentence by picking out like date, noun, 
and location, like we're able to just see kind of like put it together in our head and read through this thing much more quickly and remember like what did they just say a lot better. So like, you know, December 2019, SARS virus shows up in China uh, along with SARS-CoV, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, blah, blah, blah. Third coronavirus cause respiratory diseases called COVID-19, recognized as a pandemic. Pandemic is a very strong word, so like that's why I highlighted it by the WHO. March 2020 has had considerable global and economic impacts. And then although this is a pivot word, it's rapidly evolving. Uh, we see that it leads to acute respiratory disease syndrome or distress syndrome, and it's happening in up to 20% of cases. And they're saying that this is reminiscent of some kind of cytokine release syndrome. So we're kind of describing the motivation for this article here. And again, further talking about like these things with secondary hemophagocytic phagocytic lymphohistiocytosis. That's a word. <laughs> um, yeah, so basically like these really big words and we have to go to abbreviations because they get so complicated so quickly, but you know, highlighting it. And then now we just refer to it as SHLH or Schluch. Um, yeah, so that these are the tips I use um, and I hope this stuff is useful for you guys. The only way to get good at this is to practice it. So, you know, as much as I can walk through each paragraph here with you guys, I think it would be best if maybe a fun exercise here would be to go read through this article, highlight these words, try to skim through it and see what, you know, how much more quickly you can read and how much more you're retaining. And I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you all for watching. Please stay safe and take care and we'll talk next time.